Look, I think um, this is an issue that is uh, that we have been keeping a very close watch on the evolving situation there. It has happened uh, over the last, I would say, the conflict is the last four or five days that the fighting has broken out. I think last Friday it was. Um, I think 14th it started. Our mission in Khartoum has been in contact with the Indian community there. Um, as you mentioned yourself, I think one of you, uh, through multiple channels, informal, formal. Our embassy has issued several advisories, which you would have seen. In New Delhi, as uh, some of you mentioned, uh, we have set up a 24-7 uh, dedicated uh, control room for providing information and assistance, and the coordinates of those control rooms uh, have been shared publicly. Uh, we are engaged with countries in the region and other countries uh, that have a key role to play, particularly US, UK, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE. As you already know, the External Affairs Minister spoke to his counterparts from Saudi Arabia and UAE. He has today spoken to his Egyptian counterpart. Our ambassador in Washington, D.C. and our High Commission in London are in touch with the respective host governments. We are also working with the U various UN bodies uh, that are present there. As you know, UN has a significant presence on the ground. The External Affairs Minister is currently in New York, and he is likely to meet UN Secretary General later today and uh, to discuss the you know, developments in Sudan. Uh, in terms of the situation on the ground, as you are aware, there's been an unfortunate death of an Indian national. Uh, his body is currently at a hospital. Finally, you know, after a lot of effort, we have been able to get that body moved from his uh, apartment complex into a mortuary in a hospital. And we are seeing how to get that body uh, either back or with family evacuated. We'll see. Um, our embassy is in touch with the family of the deceased as well as the medical authorities there. Uh, just to give you a sense, look, the situation on the ground continues to be quite tense. It remains very tense, um, which renders any movement very risky. Um, so the, currently, our focus is on ensuring the safety and well-being of the individuals wherever they are located. Um, I'll come to some of the questions that you specifically answered, uh, but uh, asked. But our uh, largely, we are monitoring it. We are in touch with the people. Um, let me emphasize that look. There, we understand the difficulties people are facing. The situation on the ground, as I mentioned, is uh, is changing. It's quite fluid. There are incidents happening at various locations, and we are advising um, the community members uh, who are reaching out. In fact, there are mechanisms. They have signed up to a, a form where they're giving all the details. So we have some sense of how many people are there. But again, the power is patchy. Internet connectivity is patchy. So we're not sure yet how many finally will be there. Um, let me try to answer some of the specific questions that have been asked. Um, look, on uh, the number of people, I think uh, Abhishek, you had asked, and I think Vashankar Ji, you had asked as the External Affairs Minister had said, um, we don't want to get into the details how many and what locations for security reasons. Right now, that is something that would affect, we feel, that the security and safety of those people. Uh, I wanted to assure you that we are actually in touch with them, we are calling them. I see a lot of social media posts saying, oh, this group has not been contacted or a certain set, you know, person from this tribe or some. I assure you they have been contacted even as we came in. Uh, we had outreach, we are trying to reach out to their, in, in their local languages, trying to reassure them uh, that it is perhaps the best that they stay where they are or somewhere close by because movement on the streets currently is unsafe. 